you know anyone or maybe you have ever lost a dog, maybe it ran away or whatever, you know how incredibly stressful and difficult that situation can be and how panicky you are when you are trying to find your dog. So on today's episode, we're going to be talking about the lost dog action plan, what you can do and what you can do for others. Let's go ahead and dive into it next. All right, let's get into this week's episode. Hey, everybody, I am Jake from On Dog Training Academy.com. We're an online course and private lesson and webinar and everything awesome about dog training website. So check us out on Dog Training Academy.com. On there, you are able to now schedule one on one lessons with us. So if you would like to talk to me, if you're looking for guidance, we can do that all virtually. And we've been having some really awesome success with that. So if you need help, guys, reach out to us. We are here to help you. And it doesn't matter what you need to talk about about your dog. Anything dog related, I should say. I I, I don't train cats or gerbils or birds and I don't train kids. I've had that question asked quite a bit. I do not train kids. So anyways, this week's episode, I think it's a really important one because it kind of piggybacks on an episode I did probably, oh, two months ago, I would imagine now, uh, about a dog that that ran away locally and they were trying to find it. Well, I do have an update on that dog. Um, if you remember back uh, an episode, I think it was about a, it was a couple months ago. I talked about a dog that the it, it ran away from home and got lost, and we were trying to help it because I did see the dog. He came through um, my property, and I was able to get a picture of my trail camera and see him. So we were trying to catch this dog, and he ended up running. When I say catch, it wasn't like we were chasing him around, but he ended up running up on 70 and almost getting 70. It's a highway next to us and, and almost getting hit by a car. And and that really spooked me and it, it prompted me to kind of talk about um, that situation, what we can do to prevent that, what we can do in the moment. And um, I can give you guys an update real quick about that. Uh, he was found. He was found almost, was it a week, eight days, eight days or so after going missing and as far as I know, sightings really minimized uh, for a couple days there. And before you know it, it was, I believe it was the owner's friend or the owner was out looking for their dog and they spotted him, they called him, he came and it was a happy ending. He was very thin because he had been on the loose then for over a week, uh, but he's home and as far as I know, I haven't heard an update since then, everything went well and he's good to go. With that being said, I did have uh, an organization that um, had been working with the person to find their dog. This organization is called the Retrievers. Now, they're local to Minnesota, but I think most states and most or most cities have organizations like this. Um, But the Retrievers, it's a volunteer lost dog team. So they help you organize. They help you kind of get your thoughts together because really when you lose a dog – your brain is everywhere. What do I do? Oh my God, my dog's missing. What if something's wrong? What if it's hurt? What if someone stole it? What if, and there's just all this stuff racing. What what these people do is they help you organize things. They can come at it less emotional than you, which I think is really beneficial to say, hey, here's what we need to do. We need to start here. And that's kind of what I want to talk about today. And I'm I'm going to be putting up uh, a link to the Retriever's website. There you're going to be able to get the resources that I'm going to be talking about today. Um, but I wanted to start by talking about what happens when you lose an animal, when a dog, when your dog runs away. What should you be doing immediately? What should you be doing in a couple, a day or two days or a week or whatever? Like, what should be the process? And the retrievers have this on their website, um, and it breaks down. And I'm just going to be going through it to kind of help people out. And I thought this was a good podcast to put out, or an episode to put out, because we're getting into it's it's early June. But we're getting into the season where people are outside more with their dogs, which means dogs run away more. We're also getting into like fireworks season, which means, which of course means that there's going to be a lot of of people out uh, doing fireworks and dogs are going to get scared and dogs are going to run away and everything. And so we need to make sure um, 
that that we have a plan. We have a plan of action. On top of that, I will be doing an episode. I did it last year, but I like to do this again. I did an episode on what to do to help your dogs through the 4th of July, that dreaded 4th of July weekend where there's a lot of fireworks. Dogs are definitely more spooky. And it's a, it's a weekend or a time of year where the bulk of missing dogs happens. So this will be a good episode to kind of go on. And then, again, we'll piggyback on this one to talk about 4th of July uh, on a later episode. So what should happen? Let's say your dog runs away, gets loose, whatever. We can always do as much uh, um, stuff ahead of time to try to minimize this, but what if it happens? What should we immediately do? If your dog runs away and, and you see where it's going, by all means, you want to drive to the area and look for your dog. But let's say you were gone from work or or you're at work or something and the gate opened up. Then what do you do? You come home, your dog is gone. First thing you want to do, and like I said, all this information will be on the Retriever's website, is you want to put food or a scent article at the place where your dog bolted, where they escaped from. Because a lot of times with dogs, they might run away, but unless they're really scared or whatever, even if they're scared, they do end up sometimes coming back home. Now, if the dog is super scared or if people are chasing, which we'll talk about that in a little bit, that might push the dog out of their safe zone. But if your dog is still around, a lot of times they will come back. And so having that food out there, having that scent article, putting clothes, something out there that's going to get the dog to go, that smells, I recognize that smell, I'm going to go home. That's super helpful. Um, Talk to your neighbors or, or others on the street or other areas that your dog could be at and ask if they've seen your dog. What's really nice is a lot of people now have ring cameras. They have that on their door. Doorbells. So maybe you can talk to a neighbor or if you have a, a, a community Facebook page or something, put something out saying, hey, my dog ran away. And you never know, maybe one of your neighbors got your dog on their ring camera and it gives you a point to start. It says, OK, my dog went this direction. So now I can kind of go and, and start to work that way. So that's what you do immediately. Now, when, when it's time starts to go, so let's say your dog's been missing for an hour now, you got to call your local police department um, or law enforcement, city, townships, whatever, vet clinics, animal control agencies, shelters, to be sure to include those in your surrounding counties and communities. And the reason you want to do that is is maybe your dog hasn't been picked up yet, but there's a there's a likelihood your dog will get picked up. And if, if you don't have identification, which, man, I really, really hope everybody microchips and collar and IDs their dogs. I think it's the best way to get your dog home safely if somebody finds them. But if you don't have that, if the dog broke their collar and they're not microchipped, just let the shelters know, hey, I'm missing my dog. Here's a description of them. That way, if the dog comes to the shelter or if someone gets a call about the dog, they can relay it back to you and be like, hey, we we, we have a sighting of your dog or we, we have your dog, whatever it might be. Um, go to your local, um, like, Go to your local Facebook pages. So Lost Dogs Minnesota is what we deal with a lot. Um, but go to your local missing dog Facebook pages and place a dog a missing dog ad there. You can also reach out on like Craig Craigslist and any other community local community pet pages. But start getting that picture out there. I'll tell you what, just kind of ducktailing or spinning off of this real quick. <clears throat> that dog that I, I told you about earlier. The reason I recognize that dog was because I am part of Lost Dogs Minnesota, and I saw that dog pop up on, uh, I think it was Lost Dogs Minnesota, it actually might have been a, our community page, but I saw a picture of that dog, and I always, when a, when a missing dog comes up, I always look to see if it's a client of ours, like, hey, do I know this dog? But I'm also looking at location, and I noticed that dog was kind of in our area. So this dog pops up, and it shows up on my camera, and I'm like, and I, I get a, it's a cell cam, so it sends it directly to me right away, and I'm like, I know that dog. I know that dog. They're looking for that dog. So because people posted it out relatively quickly saying, hey, our dog's missing, it allowed me to be able to relay them, hey, this is where the dog is. This is where he's going, whatever, and kind of work from there. Again, you guys can go back and watch that podcast uh, episode and kind of get the full story of it. But having those posts out there and social media is a great thing for this. It's definitely helpful. Um, So now what happens when dog's been gone four hours. So if your dog has been gone four hours, a solid four hours, I would say now it's time to go, okay, my dog's just not like running around the neighborhood having a good time. My dog might actually be missing. And so I start to think about making, or these people start to start make, making like um, uh, intersection signs. So, hey, lost lost dog, 
you can you can get like outlines of these signs and just print them out. You can find them all over online. I believe the retrievers actually do have a template for that. Um, and you can make these flyers and start putting them out with a picture of your dog. Make sure it's a very clear, obvious picture. Uh, remember, these people are in their cars, and so they're going to quickly glance at it. So you want it to be a picture that's easily identifiable, in my opinion. Um, <clears throat> you want to use poster boards, like almost like you're, you're, you're doing a garage sale. You want it to catch people's eyes, so you want something bright. You want bright colors, um, large text, something that just lets the people know the dog's name, the breed, and that it's missing. I think it's super, super important. Um, be sure to mention, and we're going to get into this in a, in a little bit, probably in about five minutes here. Be sure to put on there, do not chase. I don't care if your dog is friendly. I'll explain what I mean by this, but I would definitely put on there, do not chase chase i think this is very important to remind people if you see my dog don't run after him so now let's say you start getting into to eight hours or more um you've got your signs out you you begin flyer distribution so you're 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 getting things out there um i actually like it's not on here but what i actually like to do is i start to map out so you've probably been driving around looking for your dog and there's a lot of different like I have apps I use for my tracking and stuff like that. There's apps you map apps you can use that'll track where you've been, and I really like to do that. I'll set it and I'll start going because what this allows me to do is I can see where I've been and where I haven't been, and I can know did I grid search this area enough or is there a spot where I think he could be that I haven't quite checked out enough. Um, it keeps you more organized, so it's allowing you to it's allowing you to see everywhere you've covered. And then if you go back and cover places, you'll get to see again where you have and have not covered. So I think it's super beneficial. I definitely um, would do that. You know, after about a day, if your dog's been missing a day, if you can, there are some tracking dogs. I think this is, it's not as popular as I wish it was, but if you can involve a tracking dog from your area, certainly reach out and see if anyone can do that. Um, add your dog to a database at at websites like Lost Pound, um, Pets Nine One One, or dot com, and uh, like FindFido.com. So there's a lot of different ones um, you can reach out to. And like I said, make sure you're on all the socials, all the socials you can to get your dog's face out there. Um, I think that's that's really helpful. <clears throat> After a couple days, uh, you can consider placing ads in newspapers. Um, lost and found sections in the classified ads. Some of those are free. Some of those you have to pay for. Contact your local radio stations. I know the people who who lost their dog in the story I talked about. They contacted the local radio station. That radio station put a thing on their Facebook page, <clears throat> and they might have mentioned something on the radio. I was not listening to that station at the time, but they may uh, broadcast for free a public service announcement saying, hey, man, we're trying to find this dog. Can people help us? Um, again, the more people I think you get involved, and I don't mean like feet on the boots on the ground. I mean eyes, eyes. All I, you know, and you don't necessarily want peep everyone uh, scavenging everywhere trying to help you find your dog necessarily. But what you want is somebody who's going from work, going home, coming or going to work, coming home, driving somewhere, who has this in the back of their mind that there's this missing dog somewhere around here and then they just happen to look out into a field or look into someone's backyard or, or, or see it crossing the road and they're like, hey, that looks like that dog. That could be what it takes to get your dog home. So I think it's super, super important. Um, after about three days, you know, I understand the stress is starting to kick in and you're like, oh my God, my dog is gone. Um, if no sightings are reported, expand your, your signage and flyer area. Now you're going to assume your dog has, has moved out of the area somewhat. Not always the case. Sometimes they're just super elusive and they stay in the area. The dog that I was talking about earlier, he was found within a half a mile of my place and really didn't move a whole lot from that area. For whatever reason, he felt sort of safe there and didn't move, but the sightings got way down. So I don't know what he was doing. Um, you know, sometimes well-meaning people will find a stray dog and give it to a rescue. So it's always good to search, like go on pet finder and just look at pet finder and see what new dogs have been put on there. Maybe yours is on there. Um, 
Look at local and regional uh, rescue group websites to see if something's been put out there. This is why I do think it's really beneficial to make sure your dog is microchipped because I think well, I, a lot of these rescues and shelters and things like that, if not all of them, will scan for a microchip and that could hopefully eliminate them getting put up into fosters or something if they've been missing um, for that long. So <clears throat> hopefully after you've done all of that, you have found your dog. Um if not, uh, it's it's tough, but, you know, you just want to keep working at it, keep plugging away, and, I mean, kudos to the people who lost their dog. They did this for eight days, and there was a point, I think it was eight days, it could have been longer, my goodness, um, there was a point where I actually looked at my wife, and I'm like, I, I don't know if he's still around. We have, I had coyotes coming through on camera, we have bobcats around here, we have a lot of wildlife, because we're out in the country, I'm like, He's been gone that many nights. It had gotten cold a handful of nights there. It was still early spring, and we just had a brutal spring. It rained. It's been snowing. I'm like, man, if he's not getting food, I don't know. And miraculously, he made it. But those those thoughts start to creep in. Now, because of what happened in this situation and that they were able to find the dog that laid into the search, it really prompted me it gives me hope that if something happens to continue to push and it should give you guys hope don't give up don't give up until until you have to don't give up so now i'm going to talk about the other part the first thing is we'll talk about um well let's see i got a couple different different things pulled up on my computer so bear with me all right let's let's say you find the dog you've spotted the dog so what are some things um, that you should do? The first thing is if I'm if I'm if I spot a dog, like the dog that we spotted um, who was uh, the one I was just talking about, the first thing I did, I ran and grabbed the highest value treats I could have. Um, I went to high value treats and I tried to see if I could get this dog to come to me. What I didn't do is I did not chase this dog. So what I did is I found the dog and I'm like, maybe it's it's still new into its its escape here or it's running away. Maybe it'll respond to me. So I tried one time. I got the dog's I said the dog's name. The dog looked at me, I went, Hey buddy, why don't you come here? And I got down on the ground. I made myself small. I made myself um, more submissive. I turned away. And I said, come here. And the dog looked at me and looked at me. And then he turned and ran away. Right as the dog did that, that was my cue. I will not, that the cue to me that I'm not going to catch this dog. This dog will not be caught by me because he is already in that flight mode. Remember I said don't chase. And the reason I say don't chase, and it, again, it doesn't matter how social or great your dog is. When a dog is missing and has been lost and doesn't know where it is, What happens if they get into like, what do you call it, Uh, survival mode, where the dog is, is all they care about is surviving. So if you know anything, I actually talked last week about stress. This is where the stomach is going to shut down and go, you know what, you're not hungry. You need to survive. You're not hungry. So you could, you could prompt them. You could try to get them to come to food, but if they're in survival mode, food ain't going to matter. They don't care. They just want to run away and get away from what they perceive as a scary thing and that literally could be everything depending on the dog in the situation so once the dog shows me that they don't want to come to me i do not pursue i back off and i monitor and that's what i did until i couldn't monitor anymore until the dog ran away i until the dog went out of sight i should say but i was able to monitor contact the owners and say i have eyes on your dog here's what you here we need to get your dog home but he will not come to me and so i would rather have them try a, because if something happens, then it's not my fault and it's it's the owners doing it. But B, the likelihood that the dog will come to them is significantly higher than the dog would ever come to me. But you want to, like I said, when you see the dog, if you see the dog, you want to try to be as least threatening as absolute possible. Um, lower your body to the ground. Use familiar positive words like treat or go for a walk i tried opening the car door and and the dog was like no don't really want to do that um understand that they may not come to you right away they might be leery now there's a difference between being leery and being 100 percent spooked and when that dog ran away from me he was spooked leery just means basically okay i'm going to 
to uh, uh, hesitate. If I see the dog like kind of like satelliting me, not really sure, sort of checking me out, I will continue to make myself small, continue to use those positive words. I'm not going to be like looking at the dog. I do not make eye contact. I m- act like something interesting is on the ground or like I'm eating something. Um, but I'm making myself small. If I'm standing up big and tall, I'm a bigger guy. I'm 6'2", 250 pounds. And so... Dogs don't look at me and go, well, that's a body of someone who's th- who's friendly. I mean, I am friendly, but just looking at me, they're going to be like, ooh, well, I don't know. You're awfully big, and I agree, and so so they are less likely to want to come to me, so I make myself small, um, but like I said, at that same time, I'm calling or texting the owners. I'm trying to get them to come, like, hey, I got your dog. I see your dog. Come here. Get here. And hopefully that works. Um, you don't want to yell out, whistle, make loud noises. You don't want to walk or run towards the dog. Any forward pressure into the dog is going to cause the dog to retreat more. And <clears throat> that was a problem we ran into with this dog is that people were trying to chase him, catch him. And he basically got into the to the point where if he saw people that he didn't know, he would just bomb out of there. He was gone. Adios. And boom, he'd take off. And so don't do that. Don't do that. Just monitor the dog. Follow the dog until the owners can. Follow by car, bike, ATV, drones. Don't 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 do that. I should say. I don't want to say follow them. Um, I followed the dog by car, but I was on a road and the dog was a long ways from me in a field. So he wasn't running from the car. He was just on a mission to get away from me or get away from everything. So I just kind of kept an eye on him. Um, you don't want to be chasing them. Don't want to be like on ATVs, drones, bikes, things that the dog could be scared of already. Um, and you don't want to make sudden movements. You to that dog are a threat. You're like a predator or whatever they would think. And so you want to make sure that you are, are, uh, not pursuing the dog in a threatening manner. Running after the dog, I can promise you, I don't care how fast you are. The other dogs are probably faster than you. Unless the dog has like, Three legs, even three legs, most dogs are still faster than me, though. So ugh, that might not work. But you want to just, like I said, you, you kind of get the point of what I'm saying. Don't try super hard to catch the dog. Only if the dog wants to come to you should you be trying to catch the dog. Otherwise, monitor, call the owners. Um, now, let's just say, <clears throat> and thanks to, you know, social media is a great tool. But social media also, unfortunately has people on there that are tools. And so I don't want you to be one of them. Now, I can say, and I will I will point out places where I am not necessarily guilty. I would say I am more I've had thoughts of this. I just kind of know better through what I've what I've done. But when you if you're following a lost dog on social media, here's are the do's the should maybe do and the definitely don'ts okay what you should do is you should be host a sign making party if you want to be helpful commenting on their negative things and we'll talk about those that's not helpful okay but maybe helping them if they're local if you know them help them make signs donate sign supplies say hey i've got these poster boards i've got these things let's get this out there help them distribute flyers um share on your social medias that hey this dog is missing because you never know you never you never know who's going to see this. Um, help to stock feeding stations. So when we were looking for this dog, I had a feeding station at my place where I had camera pictures of him. There were a couple others, and I would periodically, when because I knew where some of them were, especially the ones that were you know in my area, I'd just pop in and check it out. And if it needed to be refreshed, I'd throw a little food in it. Um, we'll be right back. Hello, this is Panic. And this is Sarah. And And you are listening to Music Elixir, a podcast between two friends discussing their favorite Asian artists and music. You know, make visits to the shelters. You know, you're you're trying to help the people. and, And sadly, 
you know, your dog goes missing on a weekend, you probably still have to work during the week unless you're able to take time off. And some people just aren't. So giving those people a hand and say, hey, while you're working, I'm going to continue the search. I'm going to continue to help you. It's, if you have the time to do it, it's amazingly um Great that people just are so grateful for the help. Uh, take a photo of potential sightings. You know, if you see the dog, if somebody sees the dog, whatever, um, call in a sighting ASAP. Just try to do try to do the best you can. You could also go and like check conditions of signs. You know, signs are great, but yeah, signs get beat up. You got weather, you've got wind, rain, snow, whatever. Um, so if you notice that the sign got knocked over or or something like that, pop that sign back up. Help them out help them out. You know, these people are stressed. They're missing the dog that they love. And uh, I can only imagine, I, I can't imagine how I'd feel in that situation just because it would be absolutely devastating if my dog ran away and didn't want to come back or was lost. Um, things that can help, like I said, sharing on social media, posting encouragement, encouraging things, continue, give them positivity. What you could also say is like, we're, 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 we're driving around. I know it says don't necessarily drive around or, or do anything like that. But personally, I think driving around and looking for the dog doesn't hurt as long as you're not interfering with the dog itself. Meaning you call in. If you see the dog, all you're being is a pair of eyes out there. Um, hang a flyer at your place. Hang a fly- flyer if you own a business. Um Look at online rescues and different things just to see if stuff pops up. Here's the big stuff, guys. What doesn't help and what actually hurts is judging the owner we've all made mistakes in our in our dog lives where whether it it resulted in the dog running away or getting hurt or something happening whatever we've made mistakes accidents happen in that moment you can always go back and be like great i'm glad you found your dog let's try to make sure your fence is more secure whatever in that moment you are doing zero help to that owner by saying, well, if you just would have had a better yard or fenced in yard or well, if you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And you know, you you can, you can really put people down and put them into a dark place really fast. They should just be focusing on getting their dogs. They shouldn't feel bad about what happened. They just need to get their dogs home. There's time for that later. There's time for, for reflecting on why this happened and how we can fix it later. Um, Fretting about weather conditions. Look, I'm telling you, like, I knew it was cold. I didn't want to put it out there. I didn't want to go, ooh, the conditions are really cold. We need to make sure we find your dog. Shit, the owner already knows this. It's not like they're oblivious. They've been out in this looking for their dog. So don't point out the fact that the weather sucks and could be potentially fatal to their dog. They get it. We just need to focus on finding the dog. There's that common thread there. Help me find the dog. Help us find the dog find the dog um reminding people about predators now i've mentally been guilty of this i've already actually mentioned this on this exact episode where i am said my fear was there are predators but i'm not putting that out on blast i'm not going to put that out there and tell the owner oh my god we have coyotes i just saw coyotes because the last thing the owner needs to think about and again i think they probably already know these things they don't need to think about some bobcat or a coyote or a wolf chasing, attacking, or killing their dog. They don't need that. What they need to focus on is what they can do, what they can control. That is finding their dog, doing what they can to find their dog. Um, uh, going to, you know, it says on here, and and the retrievers, I, I, I like what the information they have. It says going to look for the dog. What I would say um I would say it's okay to go look for the dog as long as you're not on foot. Unless you're walking like walking paths normally, like there's a lot of communities that have walking paths. I think like we did this, we went for drives periodically to see if we could see the dog. Like I mentioned before, I just don't get out and chase him. I will contact the owner and be like, we just had a sighting. We just had a sighting. And the reason I was doing that is because they hadn't had sightings. I'm like, we have to find this dog. I was concerned about the weather. I was concerned about predators, you know. I knew that this wasn't good, and so I we did go out. Me and my wife jumped in the car a couple times, and we drive around the areas that we had last seen him, hoping that maybe he was still there. He ended up being found there. We just never saw him. But don't get out and start like grid searching unless you're part of the search party. 
Don't go out on your own and start like walking through brush and doing all this different stuff. I think it's okay to check your own property. And and like out here in the country, they do mention, hey, go check your barns, go check your pole buildings, look under your boats, all these different things where dogs could be hiding. Check your property um, or allow the search party to access your property to look. But you want to be careful. Like I said, the biggest thing with this is if you see the dog, don't try to catch him. Unless the dog comes up to you and greets you. If the dog is in that survival mode, they're going to run away from you. So just contact the owners and that should hopefully help. So guys, this is all I have. This has been a little bit of a longer one, but I think going into the summer season with everything that's going to be happening, dogs are going to be out more, meaning they're going to run away, potentially slip away. Fireworks might cause them to run away. So we need to be prepared. I'm going to put a link to the Retriever's website in the description of this episode there they have really good uh, um, content where you can actually look and they have the action plans they have everything that i think you'll 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 need and i actually would save this you can print it i'm old school so like i have the print out um if you want to print it out do that otherwise save that link so that if something happens you can go right back to it and be like this is it um they also work off of donations guys so if you are liking the content that you heard today, you can always donate to us. We always are, are looking for donations to help keep this podcast as a whole going. Um, but also donate to the retrievers, donate to your local um, uh, uh, lost dog group if you can um, to help them because this stuff costs money. But you know what? You never know when you're going to need them. Think of it as insurance. You know, you, you hope you never have to use it, but you're really glad when they're there. So let's keep them there let's keep them as an option where if god forbid you lose your dog they could potentially help you so guys i hope that was helpful share this with everybody you know i don't care if they have dogs that are friendly or if they have dogs that are not friendly if they have dogs that'll never run away or if they have dogs that always run away hell i don't even care if they don't have a dog i think it's good for people who who even if they don't have a dog to understand what happens if you become part of a search group, if you become interested or vested in finding another person's dog, what you should be doing. So guys, that's it for this week. Hopefully this was helpful. Obviously start with prevention. Do your best to make sure your fences are secure. Your dogs have some sort of containment, whether that be a fence, invisible fence, a tie out, something supervise your dogs when they're outside. Um, all that stuff. But God forbid if something happens, guys, I really hope this episode was was helpful. So thank you, guys. And like always, you can check us out at ondogtrainingacademy.com. And like always, we'll see you next week.